well, sometimes people go too far. And they, I've had people ring me and write to me, and they're, they're confusing me with someone on Sky Television. I've always worked only for the BBC. And they talk about a tournament that they saw. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. And it, didn't, it never happened. I mean, it wasn't the BBC, it was Sky or um, whatever, some other, or ABC, CBS or something. And uh, they swear it happened. It's like uh, witnesses to a crime. Oh, it was a red car. No, no, it was a black car. Well, he was a fellow with a beard. No, no, he was clean shaven. And so it goes on and on and on and on. It's how people see things. I think it's a bit of a pain in the neck, but uh, I do think some of our golf rules are very complicated and very draconian. And I, mean, I remember Ian Poulter dropped his ball onto his marker once and it that moved. Was in Dubai. And, here in yeah. Dubai, yeah, yeah, well. And you know, that's a freak accident. No, why the hell that should. I don't know. I don't. I, I, it, it doesn't make any difference to his score or whatever. There are certain things that happen. And, but some of them, you see this thing that happened to Tiger Woods earlier in the year at the Masters when he hit the flag mm. and it bounded it, bound it in the water. And he went back a couple of paces. He owned up, he, he didn't have nothing to own up to. He just said, well, I dropped it there because I mean, they, were, they were working to such uh, finite yardages, which I don't really believe they can do consistently. With it. You know, they say, I can hit a ball 98 yards. 97, oh, a little bit shaky. Oh, really? Have you got a rifle? Have you got a, a calibrated rifle? You're wonderful. Uh, then they make it sound as if they could do it at will. They might do it twice out of 10 or three times out of 10. And he said, I dropped it, and, and it, you, you should, the wording is you drop it as near as possible, as near as possible from where, where you played the shot. And he went back a couple of yards, and, he, and he, the, the club looked at it, the, the, the committee, and said, oh, that's OK, we'll forgive you sort of thing, or send you on your way with a two-shot penalty. Uh, but he should, have, should in fact, have been d disqualified. If you think if you, uh, of well, he might have been, with, some, with, a lesser, uh, with a lesser unknown young assistant pro from Rochdale, and he would have probably been banned for life, you see. <laughs> well, that's the unfairness of it. That's the unfairness of life, really. But it does become a bit, um, it becomes a bit tedious. Whether you, you can imagine people sitting Come on, let's all sit. Draw the curtains now. Get your pen and pen. We've got a stop machine. We're going to uh, any mistakes we see, and we'll get on the phone. So it becomes a little bit tedious. But sometimes mo most mistakes are through ignorance, and I think golf professionals are amongst the most ignorant of the rules. I think if you took the whole of the top hundred, and you you say you've got to sit an exam for being a rule adjudicator. I think 5% oh, might pass. I doubt it. I doubt if 5% would pass. 